Hola de nuevo. Aquí estamos con... en la, la P. Vale. Um, first expression is this one, with para. Now, I recommend that if you are interested in getting your para and your por correct, then go to our channel or go to our website and look up para por, okay? Uh, and check out the video. There's a there's a video that I do which is, which gives you three little things to remember that will help you get para and por 95% of the time right, okay? It's absolutely fundamental to your learning. So go and check it out, okay? Um, but this expression is para ser, para ser, okay? And it's our way of saying you know, for being uh, for being Spanish, ooh, you speak English really well. For being, okay? So it's making this comparison, um, and it's para ser, para ser, okay? So how that would go? That sentence would be, sabes, para ser español, hablas el inglés, fenomenal, fenomenalmente de de PM. Check that out in the swearing, okay? Or Hablas es para ser, ¿sabes? Para ser inglés tienes un buen acento español. O para ser eh, profesor pff, es súper aburrido. Okay. So, for being, the first example was for being um, English, you've got a great Spanish accent. Or for being a teacher, wow, he's really boring. Okay. So it's just for being. It's making a comparison. Para ser. Okay. Now. The next one on my list is pasarse, which is to go too far. We've already talked about that, so go back and check out the, the one which we said um, narices, going three noses too far, okay? All right. Bien. Ahora, um, a little expression, por adelantado. Por adelantado. And it means in advance. And it's typically used um, like up front. If you have to pay for something up front, in advance, that's por adelantado. So, uh, si quieres alquilar esta casa, tienes que pagarme uh, cuatro semanas por adelantado. Okay, so if you want to rent this house, you have to pay me four weeks in advance. Vale? Por adelantado. It just means in advance, up front. All right, so it's a handy one to know, probably when you get your bill. And it says, un año por adelantado. Don't do it. Okay, it's too much. Now, next one, another por. Por un tubo. By the way, there are, this is an expression in Spanish, in Spain, which means a lot. Okay. There are many, many expressions with por. All right, this, this just happened to be the sum that come out in the book. I'll talk to you about what, what the book is soon. Um, at the end of this video, perhaps. All right, so por un tubo. Now, what does that mean? That means uh, through a tube, all right? Through a tube. What it means is by their droves, in their millions, in the thousands, all right? So, for example, uh, si vas a Benidorm en, en España, vas a ver a los guiris por un tubo. Okay, remember guiris? Foreigners. So, si vas a Benidón en España o en, en la costa de España, vas a ver a los guiris por un tubo, tu, por un tubo, digo, por un tubo. Um, and that just means if you go to the coast of Spain or go to Benidón, you're going to see foreigners by their millions, in their droves, okay? Thousands of them, as we say in Newcastle. So. Por un tubo, okay? So it just means a lot. It's an exaggerated amount, okay? Por un tubo. And did you notice, just this is an aside, and I don't think we've mentioned it, I made an error when I was talking, and what did I do? Did you, did you notice what I did? I said, por un tube, I think I said something, and I said, no, digo tubo, digo tubo. And this is very common when you want to correct what you've just said. You've said something and you said it incorrectly, very normal, okay? But also in your own language we do this. And so when a Spanish person has said something and they thought, that's not what I wanted to say, what they quite, quite often do is to just say, uh, digo something, I'm saying, and it's, I suppose, in, uh, certainly in English, uh, in UK English, we'll say, 
I mean, yeah, uh, for example, it's uh, um, in, their, in their drives, I mean in their droves. That's exactly what I did. In their drives, I mean in their droves. Yeah. Por un tube, uh, digo un tubo. All right, so digo is, I'm sorry, oh, got that wrong, put it right. Okay, very handy. Especially if, you, if you're a student of Spanish, very handy. Use it all the time, every other word. <laughs> digo, okay. Um, echar. Now, we're not going to deal with echar because, again, Cynthia and I have to deal with that in a, in a different uh, forum. Um, but echar means, do you know, can I just tell you something? Every one of these videos I want to be 10 minutes more or less because it's a nice learning uh, measurement. And I've got my stopwatch here. Out of the videos that I've made, probably 75% of them have forgotten to put the stopwatch on at the beginning. What's that about? What's that about? Okay, so I don't know how long this has been, so I'm going to do a few more and then I'll stop it, okay? Vale. Mejor corto que demasiado largo, ¿no? Um, que echan. So echar is a hell of a verb. And echar se, whew, massive. But the use is que echan as a question. If you want to talk about what are they, because echar is this. It's like pouring out, throwing out, putting something like this, yeah? And so you, you say, what are, they, what are they putting on the TV tonight? All right, and they say, ¿Qué echan? What are they pouring out? ¿Qué echan en la televisión esta noche? ¿Qué echan? Or in the cinema. ¿Qué echan en, en el, el cine esta tarde? Ah, vale. Um, echan una película de Almodóvar. So the, the, the putting on. We would say, what are they putting on the TV? Or what's on the TV? Yeah, which doesn't make much sense either. It's on it. Okay, or what's on at the cinema tonight? This on at, they would say, ¿Qué echan? What are they, what are they putting on? A echan una peli de Almodóvar, they're putting on a, al, 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 I don't even know how you say, how do you say that without a Spanish accent? Almodóvar, Almodóvar film, okay? Um, si, o echan una película de terror, you know, they're putting on a horror film, see? Si? Um, no echan nada. Como siempre, they're putting nothing on, as always. Okay? A mí no me gusta la televisión. Sabéis, no me gusta en absoluto. Yo no veo la televisión. No me interesa. No. Las películas sí, pero la televisión no. Entonces, para mí, no echan nada de interés en la televisión. Okay. Next one. We'll do this last one and then, let's see. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give you three expressions, okay? All starting with K. You're going to find out there's there's a lot of expressions that start with K with an accent, all right? Because it's how, all right? Um, so first one is que guay, que guay, G-U-A-Y, que guay. And, and it almost sounds like why, because the G and the U is like, a, like agua, agua. So it's que guay, que guay. And that means, how cool. So somebody says to you, Sabes, he aprobado el examen. Que guay. Que guay, hombre. How cool. Okay, I passed my exam. How cool. Que guay. Uh -huh. All right, so que guay. That's a nice one. Next one. Que ilusión. And que ilusión means, how exciting. How exciting. So, um... Oh, mañana me, me voy de vacaciones. Qué ilusión, hombre. Tomorrow I'm going on holiday. How exciting, man. Yeah? And you can say hombre if you talk to a man or a woman. It doesn't matter. Eh? You can just say how exciting, man. Hombre. Mujer. Man. Woman. Okay? So, qué ilusión. Qué ilusión. How exciting. All right? And the other one is qué impresionante. Qué impresionante. How impressive. So all of these house. Que guay, how cool. Que ilusión, how exciting. Que impresionante, how impressive. Okay, it's a great little, little one-liners that you, that help you make friends. If you, somebody does something, you go, ooh, que impresionante, yeah. Okay, so it's a good way of uh, giving a bit of positive feedback. Okay, entonces nos vemos en, en el siguiente video. Uh, vale, para terminar. Lots of people have been asking me about the book that these expressions are coming from, okay? 
the book that's, that I've written and now I'm just looking for my publisher, he's out there, Mwah! I say hello to my publisher because I, I haven't met him yet, but he's there. Um, it's a parallel textbook, okay, that starts off at very basic level, very basic English and Spanish, well, I should say very basic Spanish, but it's parallel text. Right? I've read some dreadful parallel textbooks like, uh, with the stories from, from Noah's Ark, I think. So it starts off very basic and as it goes through, it's about it's a book that's about 300, 300 pages with exercises, it gets slightly more difficult as it goes. It kind of develops your Spanish as you go through, okay? It's parallel text, it has an audio so you can hear the Spanish as well. It has a vocab builder with, with the whole book and every chapter has an exercise so it helps you to work through and it kind of builds up from beginner to intermediate. And it's also a fun story about a guy called Victor who goes from York in the UK to Toledo in Spain and has lots of adventures and the usual things. Okay, so it's, it's a nice little story. So I will keep you informed as to when I get this published. I think, it's, I think it'll be really good for really any level, any level because you can learn at different levels with the book. Okay, pues nos vemos en el siguiente video. Hasta pronto, chicos. Hasta luego.